Welcome to the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. It's been a week or two since we went up to the Great White North. We're going to give you an update on what's going on in Montreal and the surrounding areas in Quebec uh, in relation to the instability there, the war between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto Mob, which we've been at the forefront of covering um, now uh, for the you know last year to two years that it's been transpiring. So we'll start with the blood and guts, and then we'll move to some more housekeeping stuff. Um, last week, a 19-year-old male uh, was uh, taken to the hospital with uh, burns over like 90% of their body. I believe they're still alive right now. And it looks like this is another victim of the war. And uh, this 19-year-old was found near the uh, Devil's Ghosts Motorcycle Club headquarters. Um, and the significance of that is that the Devil's Ghosts are a support club um, for 81 up in the Montreal area. But it's also the breeding ground of the kingpin of all kingpins right now in the Canadian underworld, Marty Robert and Marty before he patched into the hell's angels was a member of the devil's ghosts. And this is the second, well, I should say this is the third victim in this war two of which have been combatants, one of which was an innocent seven-year-old girl that have been either burned to death or, in this case, show up at the hospital with the majority of your body torched. Um, this is, you know, kind of par for the course with what we have going on up there, and it's it's quite sobering. Um but it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. And this is, again, the second uh, second combatant. And in both cases, these combatants have been found one dead and one barely clinging to life um, in, in short proximity to major Hells Angels support clubs, the Red Devils, the Dark Souls, and now the, the, the ghost, uh, the Devil's Ghosts. So this is uh, reaching quite the, uh, you know, we're way past the tipping point. But, I mean, the, the violence is really visceral now. They, these aren't grown adults. In two cases, you have my, two of the three are combatants, but also two of the three were minors. You had a 14-year-old and a 7-year-old. The 7-year-old girl, again, died in a house fire uh, in, in the extortion campaign going on in St. Leonard. Uh, another aspect of this, of this war. And it's just, it, I'm hoping that it makes some people that are at the, you know, in leadership roles in this war, uh, take some stock of what's going on. I think, forget about the moral and ethical implications and just life and death, but it doesn't seem like it's really, and I, I don't like to get too editorial. I don't like to editorialize. I like to, you know, uh, report news, but I'll just, I'll use this time really quickly to editorialize and say that it's, it's really not in your, as the combatants in this war it's really not in your best interest um to be killing children and setting on fire 14 year old boys uh firebombing campaigns to shake down restaurants that end up with a a, a family from from france being two of a mother and her daughter being killed this is the kind of stuff that uh brings the government out in force and creates mandates from the people um, to come after you when, as opposed to when you're just killing each other and it's grown men killing grown men. So th that's, that's my uh, soapbox uh, for this uh, 
for this video. Let's finish up with uh, a couple things of note related to Rizzuto Mob Skippers. Uh, Nikki Spagnolo, one of uh, Leo Rizzuto's uh, top, you know, one of his best friends, top lieutenants, Nikki Spagnolo, Nikki Spags, sports car Nikki, um, went in front of the parole board this month and uh, got locked up about a year ago uh, for stabbing somebody in a bar fight. Didn't doesn't it had nothing to do with this uh, consternation in the underworld. I think it was a a couple guys were drunk and got into a fight. Um, but Nikki Spagnolo stabbed this guy, got sentenced to three years. After a year, he's trying to get into a halfway house, did a mea culpa. Uh, seemed to blame a lot of it on grief from the fact that his father was killed in this war back in 2016. Vincent Spagnolo, old time Rizzuto guy. Um, so it, the decision hasn't been made, but uh, it looks like Nikki Spagnuolo could be coming out into a halfway house uh, before the holidays. Um, and then we'll finish up with a story out of the Journal de Montreal. They broke this news that uh, a rising star of uh, Rizzuto mob capo Giuseppe Focorazzo, a.k.a. Joey Gator, um, was implicated in the termination of a Laval police department, Levadure, I, I apologize if I butchered the name, a female who had too many connections to Joey Gator. Uh, Joey Gator is both uh, Joey Gator and Nikki Spagnola are kind of, they're around the same age, guys in their late 40s. Uh, and guys that really represent the future of this Rizzuto Borgata to, to, to stand, stand firm. And uh, Joey Gator has been a, a, a point of contact for the Rizzuto mob in Laval for, you know, 15 years. Laval is the, is kind of the ritzy Northern suburbs. A lot of the rich and famous in Montreal live in Laval, but there's also a, it's big. There's a slice of it that has, has some, uh, uh, pretty high intensity underworld activity. Leo Rizzuto was almost assassinated uh, going from his headquarters in Laval to his home. And uh, Joey Gator has been kind of stationed there since he was in his early 30s as a guy running a uh, sports book and working in tandem with the Hells Angels back then. And uh, it appears that he sold his house, a million dollar house to Levadure and her then husband uh, back in 21. And that uh, raised some red flags. You know, I think Joey Gator, guys like Joey Gator, Nikki Spagnolo, Baldi Barbario, th those are the X factors here. If they stand firm with Leo Rizzuto, the Rizzutos will, whether they win or lose this war, they'll, they'll, they'll come out, uh, you know, still functioning and, operational if guys like uh, barbario and, and and joey gator who have long-standing ties to the hell's angels if they get for lack of a better term seduced into going over the dark side it could be the end guys like joey gator and baldy barbario are and nikki spagnol that that's the that's the future that's the risotto mob in the 2030s and 40s um obviously with leo um running the ship. So that's what's going on uh, in Canada, out in Montreal. Wanted to give everybody an update. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, please like, share, subscribe, spread the word about OG Pod, giving you breaking news from the North American underworld every day, 24-7 here at OG Pod, as well as at our companion web magazine, The Gangster Report. You can get us on Apple and iTunes as well. OG Pod, uncovering the underworld, one city, one region, one country at a time. I'm out.